So what we're looking at in these slides here, or these in individual um, images, are a succession of phenotypes leading from normal cells through to cancer cells. Now, these have been observed in different patients over different periods of time, and they've been ordered in terms of severity. Okay, It's very hard to study one patient over a 20 or 30 year period to get these observations. So they're taken from different patients and then the severity has been categorized and they've been organized in a logical sequence. Okay, And the, the hypothesis is, which is very similar to the multi-hit hypothesis, is that we have a succession of phenotypes, meaning that this phenotype here of a couple of, uh, of, of one cell that's picked up a mutation gives rise to the successive phenotype. Okay, so it's not as if you go from normal cells to a severe case um, as observed here. The, the, the idea is that you go from normal cells to a small change in one cell type, which has a growth advantage to outcompete those around it, giving rise to a second or a third phenotype. And then within that phenotype, the idea is that additional mutation occurs in the cell type, which then that cell can outgrow the um, cells around it. So you've got an increasing um, severity um, from one population of cells picking up additional phenotypes. Okay, But like I said, these samples were taken from different patients and then organized in levels of severity. Okay, So in the next couple of slides, we've got three um, pieces of evidence that strongly suggest that it's a succession of phenotypes. Alternatively, um, people were suggesting that maybe some of these phenotypes um, represent a dead end rather than a stepping stone to a further stage. And um, people were also you know, rightly suggesting that maybe sometimes you can leapfrog from an early stage to a late stage. So evidence was um, acquired, looked at, analyzed, and then they said, well, actually, it's a succession. It's not this, um, th these other observations were, were not made. So here we have the course of an actual tumor. Um, so I've added here now the timeline. So from normal cells, you have a, um, a, a period of time um, leading to precancerous pre states and then a period of time leading to a, a cancerous state. And typically, um, cancers of th th this type are seen in you know, a, a, an aged population. So here are three pieces of evidence that strongly represent this succession of phenotypes idea. So it's also referred to as a precursor product relationship. So the first piece of evidence is that when you look at um, tissue samples from patients, such as this one here, um, I'm not a histologist, so I can't interpret this without a guide. So here's the guide that the textbook provides. And what you see is that on the left here, you can see you've got normal cells showing normal growth characteristics. And from this population of cells, there have been a series of changes leading to an observable adenoma. Okay, so here's um, a few steps down that succession of phenotypes. And then from this adenoma, you can observe, and it's been captured in this slide, you can observe that the more malignant tumor is growing out of the population of cells that um, were the adenoma. And the adenoma is growing out of the population, population of cells that were the normal cells. So there's been changes occurring here, which has given these cells a growth advantage. And there's been changes in these cells, which have given a population of cells that have now out, uh, have grown to give this um, tissue mass. Okay, So you can observe in many, many biopsy samples this um, um, that there's a succession of one tissue type. And within that tissue type, another group of cells emerge. And then within that emerging cells, more mutations occur. And then another group of cells emerge. Secondly, um, people have um, intervened 
with um, and, and done um, surgical intervention. Okay, so people have, have observed these polyps that um, are starting to occur in the colon, and then they've removed the, the polyps. So if you look at these two groups here, the um, blue and the tan lines here were patients who didn't have um, surgical intervention. And you can see here that, um, that once the polyps are observed, following, um, in, the, in the following decade from, the, from these being observed, the, there's a high rate of um, cancer occurring in those, in those patients. Whereas in a similar group of patients where the polyps were removed, there, um, over the, 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 the decade, within the patients who have had the, the polypectomy, who in other words have had their polyps removed, there is a much lower incident of later stage cancers observed in those patients. So when you put this data together, you can see that if you remove the polyps, you don't get the cancers. And therefore, the cancers are derived from the polyps. Okay? And it's very clear evidence. And the third piece of evidence that suggests this is um, familiar um, diseases. So inherited diseases. There's a, an inherited condition um, referred to as familiar um, adenomatous polyposis. So within these patients, they've inherited a genetic condition, they've inherited some of those early step mutations, and they give rise to polyps within the colon. Okay, so these, these patients have a high propensity to have polyps in their colon due to inherited genetic mutations in a gene called the APC gene. And, um, and within these um, patients, they're, um, they're prone to getting um, colon cancer as well. So effectively we have a case where this inherited mutation is giving rise to colon cancer in these individuals. So we have this um, succession of phenotypes clearly documented for colon cancer. And it's thought, and it's, it's been shown, but we're not going to go through the evidence, that if you look at the development of other cancer types in the body as well, then we also have a succession of phenotypes. So it's the same basic principle applies to different types of cancers, not just um, this, this, this multi-step progression in the colon cancer. You can look at multi-step progression in breast cancer, stomach cancer, lung cancer, prostate cancer. And just a little um, animated graphic here that just shows this progression um, so that effectively you have this normal population of cells and within that normal population of cells an unfortunate mutation occurs in some of these important genes that control cell growth, cell proliferation and other um, um, important phenotypes and then this cell here has the ability to grow at a faster rate than those surrounding it so over time <clears throat> it manages to outcompete and outgrow the cells and therefore we now have a genetically similar um, population of cells that all contain that initial mutation in that one cell because that one cell is rapidly dividing and remember we made some statements earlier that you don't observe cancers in um, populations of cells that aren't undergoing replicative life cycles okay because it's this um, replication and amplification of the cells amongst the other cells which are, uh, in which it's, that these cells are growing, that it can grow at a faster rate. Okay? If the cells are generally very slow growing, then you don't get this amplification to an extent to see a cancer. So slow growing, slow replicated cells such as muscles and neurons, you don't tend to see this, but fast growing cells such as epithelial cells, um, once you've got these mutations, these cells are able to grow faster than those around them. And again, within that population, you then get additional mutations occurring. And it's starting to get a little more diverse here because um, as the genome becomes more unstable, you tend to get um, different populations emerging within these cells. And this continues through to developing a, a malignant um, phenotype.
Okay, and we'll in later lectures we'll look at some of the actual genes um, that are being mutated to give rise to these phenotypes. So, so now we can look at these stages of progression. Um, we can organize them in a linear fashion as a succession of phenotypes and the evidence suggests very clearly that each um, stage is um, an outgrowth from the previous stage and this process occurs over many years. So at a cellular level we've got this multi-hit hypothesis at a more you know phenotypic level we've got um, a succession of phenotypes and you know at the sort of you know, body level, what we're seeing is the development of a cancer over many years. So, um, for colon cancer, this occurs um, over um, a couple of decades. And if you look at other cancers that have been well studied, um, you know, head and neck cancer, cerv cervical cancer, lung cancer, breast, prostate, you've got this um, th this similar progression over many years of time. And in some instances, they're starting to identify particular genes and particular mutations that occur at various stages in the progression of that cancer.